six bottom plow tractor right here. Big old girl. Thank you. Got a little smaller tractor now, Miles. This was an S20, a little older tractor. It is 38 model. F20, Dick Knight Farm, works on this tractor too. Randy Tinker, uh, Henley Missouri is running that tractor. Randy, thank you. Got those big old sand lugs on the back of it. Thank you, sir. Very unusual wheels there. Got an M now, 1951 M. Dick Knight Farm owns this tractor. Mike Conlon of Marcusville, Missouri running that tractor. Thank you, sir. Hey, we got a little H. Now I'm going to get a little smaller tractor. This is a 45 model miles. It is owned by Jim and Elaine Kessel of St. Elizabeth, and it's got a hand clutch. Sort of an unusual feature for this tractor, but probably a nice one. Who made that? M and W. Yeah. All right. Nice feature. Now, here comes an interesting subject. This is an IC. Yes, it is. And they were a honeybee. This is a little... 140 tractor chassis, and they made it into these. These are really well liked. You know, back about 40 years ago, whenever we started uh, using bulk fertilizer and spread fertilizer and having the fertilizer bins and stuff, a lot of these were the first of the what you call skid steer and don't run off here. Uh, that was used, and a lot of them used in fertilizer plants were ate up entirely, and there's very few copies of these around. Owner Gene Doty from Plattsburgh, Mike Doty, uh, operator, I think it's about a 52. Here's a, you need to take a picture, you don't see many. Former charter member, now deceased of our club, was the first president, had a honeybee loaded. All right, another nice M, 1947 model this time, Mike and Linda Kessel of St. Elizabeth, Missouri have that tractor. Thank you, pretty feet. I like to say, and it says you will always go straight if you keep one wheel in the fur. Good advice. But that's only if you got the back wheel in the fur. Okay. We'll work on the foot. Uh, okay, we got an international 660 diesel. Oh, I'm so glad to see a 660. You never see them. And this is the big horse. Uh, Mayor Farm. And from uh, Salisbury, Chris Taylor driving uh, out of sale. And uh, oh, the Bridgeport, Nebraska sales, who you got this? The big sale they had about a, a week or 10 day sale back a couple years ago is where they bought this tractor. Well, that's a nice one. Standard Crest. Well, we got one coming up now that's right off the farm. This man, I bet, uses this tractor all winter long. This is a 1967 International 656 with a loader on it. Of course, he's got bail parts on there. Ben Naylor, Naylor Farms, Salisbury, Missouri. Ben, thank you for being with us. Here is a, probably one of the most interesting. I'm trying to get David Jones and his family to uh, write an article submitted in Red Power about this tractor. This tractor has got history. WD-40 diesel, rare tractor in its own right. First production diesel tractor ever produced in the United States right here is one. And it is one of the early ones. 1935, first year build. Serial number, as Dennis Dickens said yesterday, all starts almost all models, 501. This is 519. Very early. Um, this tractor was exhibited at the St. Louis World Fair, I believe in 37. You might correct me whenever the World Fair was in St. Louis. It was a very, there was a little question about whether it was supposed to be gray or red, but the owners that bought them in Texas, and it originated up into Missouri. It has the road wheels on it. You see the extra spokes for heavy service. And they said they run these tractors around the clock, never shut them off. When David found this outside of Kansas City, it was in a floodplain, it had been underwater for about uh, 30 plus years, and he totally restored it, and I will vouch for it, if this tractor wasn't dead, I'll eat my hat, brought it back to existence. The Jones family from Powderly, Texas, and Noah, Seth, Seth is driving it, while riding on it, 
Patrick, you're driving. Boys, you're some sitting on history right there. Give them a nice hand. There is a museum team. They're going to have to do a little work on the wheels on that one when they get it home. We had a little fun. All right, we got a nice little H, Super H, actually, 1953, a little later one. Dan Hanna of Buckner, Missouri, owns this tractor. Dan and Sandy. This is a 1937 F. Corey Burton of Fillmore, and this tractor is unique. It's got electric start, which is quite a nice help with that one. Another Farmall A, 1943, a World War, a World War uh, II era tractor right here, by a low production year for him. Ronnie Burton from New Bloomfield, Missouri. Ronnie, you got a nice one, and you got a good driver there to boot. Thank you. All right, Miles, we got a 1939M early. 1939, Sunny Mike, New Bloomfield, Missouri, has this nice and restored tractor. Thank you, sir. And it is definitely a 39. There's characteristics that stand out for the first year build. Farmall Super A, Wayne Megabar. And he's from California A, Missouri. This is a 1948 uh, a Super A. Uh, working tractor, you betcha. We got us a side mounted mower. And we got hydraulics, and he's ready to mow your hay right there. And he's got a nice early exhibit power lift. He's ready to go. And I like that hat, Miles. That's a dandy. All right, we got a little bigger tractor now, W6. This is a 1947 W6 McCormick International called the Standard. Rodney Garnett of Whole Summit, Missouri owns this tractor. It was a full 13 plow tractor in the Missouri River bottom, but I'll bet it'd do it. Good to see you, sir. Farmall 8, 1954 is what they're saying. Paul Vector from New Bloomfield. And Paul enjoys red tractors. Also has a B and M and uh, MT uh, 504 that he uses on the farm. Oh, 504, excuse me. I was going to get excited here. I thought it was a 500 and fourth one, but a model 504. Well, you're headed in the right direction, young man. There, you want to bring them red ones and get them out of the shed. Okay. Okay, Miles. We got one here that's a little different. This is an MD. It's a 1951 Formal MD. That stands for diesel. Now, this doesn't have an international motor in it. This is a 271 Detroit diesel conversion which raised the horsepower to about 60 horse. Chris and Rick Pierce will do things on it, and I guarantee you, you know you've been on that all day, because it'll scream at you. Reel her up a little bit. Right right up, son. Yeah. 19.30, the Corning Dairy. Eric B., uh, Eric Schulte, from Jefferson City, Missouri. Purchased new by his great uncle Anton Schulte at San Martin. This tractor was used for custom pricing and fired a sawmill and to make terraces for many farms in the area. Probably had a whirlwind terrace as if they pulled. 2236 set unused for 30 years along Highway 50. Yes, sir, we. And I looked at this tractor and just sweated every time I went by wondering, I wonder whose tractor that is. It's set up there just off of 50 Highway for years, until it was restored by my uncle Stephen Schulte in 1995. Stephen and Anto passed along a full set of steel wheels and extensions and road bands, which will be the next step in the restoration. But I want to tell you something. I don't want to stand too close to these, but they haven't made the Governor Ward stars for probably 55 years. And they definitely haven't made knobbies like this. Oh, Lord, Keith. Them things are over the road in three times over. If, if you could preserve those, they'd be worth more to steal. But unfortunately, they won't last forever. And that's factory round. Yeah. Thank you.